Hey guys, it's Forex James with another video for you. I have decided that I'm going to be recording a viewer's request playlist or series just to be able to answer the questions that my viewers have better because they usually ask in the comment section and I wouldn't be able to elaborate as much in writing as opposed to me making a video. The first video in this series is for John Doe. Okay, it's to answer basically all his questions of how I trade. Okay, so I've entitled this video a recap of how I trade. Okay, John Doe, this is especially made for you. So um, I appreciate you watching lots of my videos, even the older ones, and asking lots of questions, okay? Now, a lot of those questions you asked, um, I have to really re-watch the video again, because I've made it such a long time ago, and answer in lots of details. Basically, you wanted to know of how I trade today, right now, right? It's November 2019. Now, a lot of the videos that I've recorded were done um, years ago, one year or two years ago. And sure enough, I've evolved as a trader, guys. Okay, It's a process which you gradually become better at if you focus on doing the right thing, which is making good trades. Okay, The way I trade have slightly changed, Okay, have slightly evolved. Now, this is not to say that the core principles have changed. Okay, it's more of my style of trading that has changed. So recently, I started looking more uh, on the upper time frames, and I've changed my style from being a day trader to more of a swing trader. This has worked really well for me, guys, because it's reduced my screen time by a lot. A lot of times, those long hours on the screen will create a lot of stress, okay? And by swing trading, my screen time has decreased, my performance has improved. So it's a win-win situation, okay? I get to do more things that I like. Besides trading, it's less stressful. And what else would you ask for, right? The idea of trading is having that financial freedom, not having a boss or a job so that you can be free and do whatever you want in life. Okay, let's cut to the chase here. What I'm about to share with you guys have actually been posted on the Price Action Basics videos. Okay, um, after this video, if you wanna go watch them again one by one just to get more explanation, please do so. Being a discretionary trader, there are lots of factors that I look at. But I start off by looking at direction. So what I do is look at my daily time frame. And I don't use any indicators. Some people uh, would say that if the price is above 200 or 50 EMA, then I would only look for longs. This is not how I do it because if you're using an indicator, it's gonna lag, okay? So what I look at is, for example, on the daily, we have a trend, okay? The trend is slowing down, it's falling into a range. There's only two phases, right? This is the daily, by the way, okay? So when it starts to fall into a range, I know that it's an uptrend, okay? And we're in a range, and we're at the bottom of the range. So, direction is up. you guys understand? Same scenario, another one, from this point onwards, okay, at least to test the top of the range. And later on, we'll go into the lower time frame, okay? Now, another scenario, for example, an uptrend falls into a range, okay, and price heads to test the highs here, 
I may have a short direction bias. Despite being in an uptrend, we are in a range. Okay, this is a uh, this is going to take time. You're not going to get this immediately. You need to do this every day and be able to follow the flow of price. So just because it's in an uptrend doesn't mean I'm not going to take a short. Doesn't mean I don't have a down direction bias. Okay? But my bias to the downside is only until let's say the bottom of this range. So from this point onwards, I'm going to be looking for shorts only until here. Number one is direction. Now, once you're able to identify direction and identify the market phase we're in, okay, this is when I'll go into the lower time frames to look for my levels my supply and demand or my support and resistance or my support turning into resistance or my resistance turning into support but I would trade it with direction hope you guys are able to follow so far so the first example of an uptrend we're in the bottom of the range here Okay. I will usually go into the H1 so that I'll be able to enter with a tighter stop loss. Okay, now, eventually at one point, price is going to turn to the upside, right? And that is what I like to call the turn. On the H1, what you may see is something like this. A downtrend, this is before the turn by the way guys, okay? And then it's going to try to push higher here, breaking the highs, trapping the people who think it's going to go along, but instead it makes another push to the downside before finally turning. Okay? So what may look like as a range on the daily may be a trend on the H1. So depending on your personality and depending on where and how you want to enter, you may enter before the turn or after the turn. A lot of times when this happens, I'll take a look at my CCI indicator or oscillator, whatever, and you'll spot A, divergence which further confirms the turn that's about to happen, okay? Okay, and all this and this turn specifically usually coincides with another level here on the left side. It could be a rally-based rally or a drop-based rally or just a, a, just a demand level basically, right? Where buyers were interested previously that's the whole idea of supply and demand so again you may enter let's say after the turn right if you're more conservative you want to see the price has turned then what you can do is wait for a pullback okay because it's not gonna shoot up immediately like this it's unlikely but instead, it's going to create another small trend, something like this, right? Testing the highs here, testing the lows here, and then pushing up, making higher highs. Okay, so anywhere there is a dip in the market, um, it's an opportunity for you to enter. Okay, I'm not going to go into the details of what to look for. It's going to be too long. Okay, but basically... This is the idea of entering after the turn. Now, if you're entering before the turn, it's more aggressive and more risky because you are only anticipating for price to turn. It hasn't turned yet. Therefore, if you were to enter uh, before the turn, 
what I'd recommend you doing is to place a wider stop loss. Whereas after the turn, you could probably place a stop loss at the turning point. Okay, I hope this makes sense. If not, uh, please rewatch the video series of uh, Price Action Basics. Okay, and after all of that, the whole idea is for me to be able to enter on the lower time frame, H1 or H4, to be able to place a stop loss of let's say 30 pips and an exit of at least 60 or more. Okay, this is why you have to keep doing. Your risk to reward is one of the crucial element of trading, guys. And if you're able to repeat and keep making trades that produce bigger winners than losers, you will make it as a trader, I promise you. Create a journal for yourself and you'll see the odds playing out. Okay, that would end this video for now. I hope it answers lots of your questions, John, and the rest of you who are watching as well. I hope it adds value and more information to your trading, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye now. Yeah.